This video is sponsored by Stamps.com. I've been using them to print postage straight from my home and I couldn't imagine doing it any other way at this point. To do the same, simply go to Stamps.com slash company man and right now they have a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage, and a free digital scale. <laughs> Safeway has easily been one of the most significant supermarket chains in the United States, helping shape the concept itself into what we all know it is today. I mean, for almost 100 years now, they have consistently been ranked among the biggest, and for well over a decade throughout the 1970s and 1980s, they were widely considered to be the biggest. From there, it's been pretty wild. They fell from their peak and have certainly had some questionable years, but amazingly, they have still remained relevant. It all depends on how you measure it. I don't think there is a single metric that gives gives an accurate picture of their ups and downs over the years, you'll see what I mean as we go, but when looking at their number of stores, we can see that big changes have definitely been happening. So in this video, I want to try to explain all of it while focusing on the ups and downs of the iconic Safeway stores. Going back to the early 1900s, when a minister from American Falls, Idaho named S.M. Skaggs felt that the farming community in his area was not happy with their existing grocery stores. They were complaining about the quality and the variety and the price. So he figured that the competition was weak and he could probably be successful in starting his own grocery business. He went out, got a loan, and used the money to open a tiny 576 square foot grocery store that he named after himself. However, by 1915, he hadn't been all that successful with it and he wanted to dedicate more time to his religious interests, so he sold the store to his 27 year old son named Marion for the price of $1,088. Over the next decade, he and his five brothers grew that chain to 428 stores entirely in the states along the west coast. Then, in 1926, Charles Merrill, one of the founders of Merrill Lynch, became involved and everything exploded from there. See, he saw growth potential for grocery stores in the west and was looking to get his firm involved with them in a big way. He orchestrated a deal that combined Skaggs with another emerging grocery chain in the west founded by Sam Selig that had recently changed their name to Safeway. Five years later, Later, a third major chain in the West called MacMart was added to the mix, helping the company reach over 3,200 locations. And by that measure, you may be able to say that Safeway actually hit its peak in 1931 because they have never had a higher store count. But that would be more of a technicality. Those 3,200 stores were much smaller than the modern Safeway supermarkets. They followed the trend in the industry and, like most others, started opening stores in substantially larger buildings. In fact, in the 1940s, shortly after surpassing passing $1 billion in sales for the first time, they spent $200 million to replace 1,000 of their stores with bigger, fancier ones that included expanded sections and updated conveniences like frozen food cases. Most of those buildings, by the way, included nearby parking lots, which were still not common among their competitors. Around that same time, they adopted that iconic S logo, and the stores really started taking shape into something that much more resembles the Safeway stores that we have today. Early on, they were successful because of their approach of giving the customers more knowledge and power, leading to greater independence and less reliance on the store itself. Here's what I mean by that. The name of it, Safeway, is derived from the fact that unlike many of the competing stores at the time, they did not offer credit to their customers, forcing them to pay with cash. I think we all know that credit can be risky, especially in those years leading up to the Great Depression, and cash is the safe way to do it. Also around that time, it was pretty standard for the people working in the store to go around and collect the items you need from a shopping list that you gave them, but Safeway was among the first to let their customers shop around the store and gather their own items. In 1935, they were the first chain to start including expiration dates on perishable food labels, giving customers much more confidence about the freshness of the items that they were buying. In that same decade, they were also among the first to set the price of their produce based on the weight of it, instead of by the piece or by the bunch. In the 1970s, they were one of the first to label their ground beef with fat content. To summarize here, Safeway was among the first major grocery store chains, with roots going all the way back to over a century, and over that time were either innovators or early adopters of all these aspects that have come together to help shape the modern day shopping experience. That is how they grew so big. By the 1980s, they were operating well over 2,000 stores that were generating sales of around $20 billion a year, making them the largest grocery store chain in the world. Then, in 1986, every 
everything was shaken up when this company called Dart Group attempted a hostile takeover of Safeway. They had bought 6% of the stock and attempted to buy the rest of it against their will. I guess Dart had a bit of a negative reputation for doing things like this and had no experience in the retail food industry, so Safeway was really trying to stop this from happening. In the end, Safeway was able to prevent it by agreeing to a $4 billion leveraged buyout by a private equity firm known as KKR. It was a deal that more than quadrupled Safeway's reported debt to a new high of $5.7 billion. Now, if you watch this channel often, you are probably thinking that right here is where everything went bad for Safeway, but it is not that straightforward. It really depends on how you look at it. Many people will tell you that this buyout was actually a tremendous thing for them, and honestly, I can see how they have a point. See, over the next couple of years, Safeway quickly lost that number one spot because they started downsizing in a major way. I mean, they divested all of their stores in Dallas, Houston, El Paso, Little Rock, Salt Lake City, Kansas City, all of Oklahoma. They even sold everything they owned in Southern California to a competing store called Vons in exchange for a 30% ownership in that chain. Over those two years, they had sold about half of their stores in various deals, totaling about $2.4 billion. They then used those proceeds to reduce their debt to a more manageable level, that was the motivation behind the sales in the first place, and the stores that remained were much more efficient. Even though their number of locations were cut in half, their sales were not cut by nearly as much, meaning that their sales per store were much stronger. Overall, Safeway came out of this as a smaller yet more productive operation. By 1996, they had reduced that debt to under $2 billion, which was actually not much higher than it was before the buyout a decade earlier, but this is where I would say that things truly started to fall. In the 1990s, Safeway had recently gotten a new CEO named Steve Bird, and his new plan was to regrow the business mostly through various acquisitions. By 2003, their store count was back above 1800, but unlike before, a lot of those were not Safeway stores. They belonged to other chains that Safeway had acquired. I say that it all went bad here because most of these acquisitions were disastrous. The biggest of which were Dominic's, a chain of over 100 stores, mainly in the Chicago area, that was bought in 1998 for $1.7 billion, and Randall's, a chain of over 100 stores in Texas that was bought the following year for $1.7 billion. And by the early 2000s, both of them had already started struggling. Customers did not respond well to the changes that Safeway had made to them, primarily involving product selections and staff reductions. If you happen to have shopped at either one of them around that time, let me know how you felt about the changes. It's probably not good, considering that they lost a lot of business, evidenced by the fact that Safeway had to record goodwill impairments of hundreds of millions of dollars for each of them, and that contributed to the billion dollar net loss that they reported between 2002 and 2003. Also contributing to that net loss was interest. At that point, they were paying over $400 million a year in interest because they had to borrow a lot of money to make those ill-fated acquisitions. After all of that effort they had done to reduce it, their debt had crept back up to a new all-time high of about $8 billion. On top of that, they had also paid $1.6 billion to buy the remaining percentage of Vons in Southern California, a store that in 2003 was involved in a major four-month-long strike of grocery store employees in that region. Walmart was entering the area and Safeway was trying to lower pay and benefits to remain competitive. In the end, they came to an agreement, but the whole thing set them back, hurt their labor relations, and hurt their public reputation. By 2004, some bold attempts had clearly set them in a poor direction, but they were able to make some changes that led to an impressive comeback. In their 2005 annual report, they even say, after weathering three difficult years and retooling our strategy, we rebounded dramatically in 2005 and set the stage for further progress in 2006 and beyond. The entire comeback was centered around their new and improved lifestyle stores. The appearance and the identity of the store itself almost completely changed. They invested over $4 billion to remodel them, changing the fixtures, the floors, the lighting, the decorations, all in a way that was meant for them to appear to be more natural and warmer and inviting. By 2005, they had made the transition with about a quarter of their stores, and over the next few years, they had done it to almost all of them. Part of this was a big emphasis on their produce. They enhanced quality controls, raising the bar as far as what qualified as a passable piece of fruit, and even conducted research to learn what people most wanted to buy. For example, they figured out exactly how sweet their customers wanted a grape to 
to be and then went out and found suppliers that could grow grapes with that specific level of sweetness. They expanded their private label brands, you know, the ones exclusively sold in their stores, even introducing a new line called O Organics with over 150 products. The marketing is what brought all of it together to convey their new message with the tagline, Ingredients for Life. And over the next decade or so, they were able to reduce their debt yet again and mostly rebounded their income, excluding the recession. The reason that is so high in 2013, it relates to the sale of their Canadian operations for $5.6 billion. They sold it to Sobeys and then used that money to reduce their debt. So again, a smaller but more stable operation. Finally, in 2014, Safeway was bought by Albertsons in a $9 billion deal. And then in 2022, it was announced that Kroger agreed to buy Albertsons for $24 billion. There were questions about regulatory approval, but everything is consolidating. Rebranding is different stores and blending the products and operations at times. So I don't know, it's starting to feel like Safeway is getting lost in the mix. Consider that what used to be hands down the biggest grocery store in the world is now part of what may become the second largest behind Walmarts. Albertsons and Kroger combined would own 5,000 stores with less than 1,000 of those being Safeway stores at this point. So yeah, despite all these comebacks, it has kind of been losing its significance. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Safeway? Are they better or worse than all these other supermarkets? And what makes you say that? If you have been shopping there for decades, how have they changed over that time? Do those changes line up with how I presented it in this video? Or have you noticed something else? And finally, what do you see for the future of Safeway? Are they strong enough to break out and become more significant again? Or are they going to continue downward into irrelevance? And any other thoughts you have about Safeway, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Stamps.com is the sponsor of today's video and they have saved me so much time. Just consider how much of our world is now digitized or automated with food delivery and smart thermostats. So why would we still be waiting around at the post office with this old mailing and shipping system? With Stamps.com, you will never go to the post office again because they are your one-stop shop for all of your shipping and mailing needs. And for any business owners out there, those time savings are going to really start adding up. For over 25 years, they have been indispensable for over 1 million businesses because all you need is a computer and a printer to start receiving some of the best discounts in the industry. They have a long-standing relationship with USPS and UPS, allowing for unbeatable rates up to 84% off. I recommend you go to stamps.com slash company man for a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. One more time, that is stamps.com slash company man. Thank you for watching.